Is modafinil really the limitless drug that you've been told it is? We're talking all about modafinil in today's podcast. Let's jump into it. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Holistic Nootropics Podcast. My name is Eric, and I'm the founder of HolisticNootropics.com, and I'm here to help you boost your supplement and nootropic performance. One way you can do that is by heading on over to HolisticNootropics.com and downloading a copy of my free supplement buying guide. This guide will walk you through ingredient by ingredient on how to avoid most of the junk that is being sold in the $100 billion supplement industry because yes, in fact, most of the supplements that make up that giant number 100 billion are total crap. They're filled with all kinds of fillers, preservatives, excipients that create excess toxicity when consumed in the body and then also take away from the actual performance of the supplement you're taking. So if you want better supplements, if you want better nootropics, Download a copy of my supplement buying guide, and that is one great way to start. Also, if you are new here on the channel, be sure to subscribe, like the video if you're watching this on YouTube, and leave a comment down below, and we'll keep the conversation going there. If you're listening to the audio podcast and you enjoy what you're listening to, head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave the podcast a five-star review because that helps us grow the podcast, that helps us get more visibility in the algorithm, and just is a great thing to do regardless. Okay, so let's jump into today's podcast all about modafinil. Let's start off by covering the basics. What is modafinil? So modafinil is a uh, is commercially known as the drug Provigil. It's a wakefulness-promoting drug that was approved in 1998 by the FDA for the purposes of the treatment of narcolepsy, excessive sleepiness during the day due to obstructive sleep apnea, and shift work sleep disorder. Um, basically, its main job is to promote wakefulness, specifically for people who are dealing with um, some kind of sleep issue that brings on, uh, you know, that may be related to narcolepsy or brings on daytime drowsiness. So, um, how does modafinil work in the brain? Well, it's a dopamine reuptake inhibitor, which means that it cancels out things like um, MAO. It cancels out um, these uh, the dopamine uh, the dopamine transporter that uh, basically um, metabolizes dopamine. So essentially, what it means is that by Inhibiting the reuptake, it keeps dopamine around longer. So this is going to give you more attention, more alertness, and just overall cognitive enhancement. Um, it does this through eliciting changes in the activations of uh, in the activation of brain regions associated with cognition, including the hippocampus and the prefrontal cortex. So it's mostly working in the hi uh, hippocampus and the prefrontal cortex. Um, of course, these areas are what are your main areas in the brain for learning, memory, and synaptic plasticity. And it also stimulates norepinephrine. Uh, it uh, inhibits the reuptake of norepinephrine, thus uh, stimulating more norepinephrine in the brain and glutamate production and reducing GABA. So you're getting more stimulation and you're getting less um, uh, less sedation through something like GABA. Um, it may also activate the orexin neurons, which regulate wakefulness via histamine, um, but it's debatable whether this is a primary mode of action of modafinil. So in the brain, it's basically hitting all the levers that are going to promote wakefulness and diminish drowsiness. Um, so Again, modafinil primarily, you know, on label, it's prescribed to be used for sleep deprivation recovery. There have been many studies in this. That's probably why it's been, uh, that, that's probably why it was accepted or um, approved by the FDA almost 25 years ago. So um, it's been uh, it's been tested in randomized controlled uh, trials. It's been tested in humans. It's been trusted, uh, tested preclinically in animals and in vitro. It's been tested in military personnel. It's been tested in athletes. It's been tested in students. It's been tested in young people, old people, healthy, unhealthy, um, sleep deprived, not sleep deprived. It's been tested a lot. So um, there really is no doubt to the effectiveness of um of how uh, modafinil can be helpful, again, for promoting awakeness, promoting alertness. But the interesting part comes in, and really the reason why I'm covering it on this channel, is because it is a potent nootropic. It may even be the nootropic that was brought to light probably 10, 15 years ago that, you know, uh, that really kind of started this cast, this, um, this trend of 
people of biohackers using it, of really anybody who wants to get a cognitive edge, you know? Um, so you see a lot, uh, you see, you see modafinil being very popular, um, in, uh, you know, obviously working professionals, entrepreneurs, people in the tech space, people who just need their brain on for, you know, at a high, working at a high level for long stretches of time. So, um, you know, I, obviously it's good again for, you know, it's good for programmers. It's good for people who have to be able to just focus intensely for, you know, for long periods could be useful for students, could be useful, um, uh, for, uh, you know, again, working professionals, entrepreneurs, um, it could be good for those withdrawing from heavier stimulants. So, um, there's actually been studies showing how modafinil can be a potent alternative to using something like Adderall or even using uh, other amphetamines, using methamphetamine. There's been a bunch of studies done showing how modafinil can help those recovering from methamphetamine uh, use and addiction help them recover, um, and then other psychostimulants as well. So it's good to use modafinil to kind of help um, you know, you don't want to say that it that it recreates the same feelings, but it's almost kind of like uh, uh, it's almost it's not a one for one replacement, but it can replace you know some of those kind of uh, more uh, you know like low notes. It can uh, it can help kind of. Uh, prevent, you know, major energy dips. So if somebody is coming off of amphetamines, maybe fatigue is something that you deal with. Modafinil is going to be good for that. But of course, you're not going to get the psychostimulation. You're not going to get hallucinations. You're not going to get addiction. Um, and that's another big reason why modafinil um, uh, is so important in addiction recovery because it's not addictive itself. Now, it can bring on, you know, a flow state. It can bring on, um, you know, feelings of intense focus. So maybe for somebody who is already prone to addiction and really likes that feeling of, you know, taking a pill and getting almost instantaneously into a flow state, maybe there might be a potential to overuse this drug, which is, you know, certainly a note of caution, but it does not have an, an inherent addictiveness to it, probably because it does not blast your dopamine and norepinephrine quite like uh, quite like an amphetamine does. Um, so if you are using modafinil, you do have to be aware that there is uh, that there is a probability for abuse and addiction, but it's it's very 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 low, um, which is also again why this is used in the military. Um, but it is a prohibited substance according to the um, World Drug uh, Enforcement Agency WADA. You know who uh, they do drug and uh, what is it uh, performance enhancing drug. Uh, um, they do the uh, performance enhancing drug watchdog for all the major sports and Olympics and all that stuff. So, um, so the biggest benefits, again, alertness, attention, cognitive speed. Um, the interesting thing here with the, uh, with the boost in attention. So if you're somebody who has a hard time focusing and, uh, attention and maybe even ADHD, this can help with that. This can help promote, uh, uh, longer stretches of focus and attention and concentration. But the interesting thing is, as opposed to something like Adderall, modafinil does not, uh, modafinil increases attention independent of the hyper arousal. So because modafinil does promote wakefulness, the, its ability to promote wakefulness is actually separate from its ability to enhance cognition. And that's because of the, the areas of the brain that it actually activates. So you're not getting, you're not getting hyper arousal and then focus because you're focusing because you're so aroused. You're getting the hype, you're getting the arousal, but then you're also getting attention benefits that are not connected. Does that make sense? Sometimes with a thing like, uh, you know, with a stimulant, um, you know, with a, like a, something that speeds you up again, like Adderall or some kind of amphetamine, you are able to more focus on something because you are so aroused, you are so stimulated. And those two things go together. You're focusing because you're stimulated with, uh, with modafinil, you are focusing because it's actually increasing your ability to focus 
And it's also increasing your ability to uh, feel stimulated and awake, but they're two separate things. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, it has been shown, uh, shown to boost memory. So you can Im- it improves function in several, um, several parts of the working memory and episodic memory. Um, there are randomized control trials. One specifically was uh, uh, seen in 60 patients, a randomized control trial using modafinil, and they found that compared to placebo, those patients using modafinil experienced significant memory enhancement. Um, you get neural protection from modafinil, which is actually really interesting because when we're talking about, you know, when we're talking about smart drugs and we're talking about nootropics, we often think of the here and now. I want something to boost my ability to focus now, to be engaged now, to um, to feel relaxed now. But what you're actually getting from modafinil is you're getting anti-inflammatory properties. You're uh, able to, it reduces neuroinflammation by supp- uh, suppressing inflammatory cytokines, T-cell differentiation, monocyte and glial cell activation. And so because of that, It's actually protecting your brain from things like, you know, onset dementia, from, uh, you know, the beginnings of the chemical formulations of Parkinson's, of basically brain aging. Now, I'm not saying specifically that modafinil prevents Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm saying is that it lower, it's able to lower inflammatory, um, inflammatory uh, properties that stave off the aging of the brain. And so this has also been studied quite extensively. Um, so, and this is also maybe a reason why that it's such a good uh, substance to use when recovering from drugs because many of the stimulants are pro-inflammatory. Using an anti-inflammatory compound like modafinil can help offset some of that damage done by the stimulants. So a big question people often have with modafinil is modafinil safe? So, um, like I said earlier, there is some risk for escalation, for addiction and abuse. This has been seen in humans and animal studies, and this is especially important for those with a history of addiction. So, is long-term modafinil use good for you if you have a history of stimulant addiction? Probably not, but it can be kind of like that little stepping stone to start moving yourself away. It's very difficult to ask somebody who has a stimulant addiction of some sort to just cut cold turkey. I know many of us believe that that's what that's what people should do, but in fact, you do need these. You know, you do need these uh, these compounds that can help you kind of you know more easily get off of that addiction. Modafinil can certainly help with that, but it itself can also be abused. Although there is no withdrawal um, and there is no like abuse or uh, addiction associated side effects in that sense, um, it can or it has been noted to cause things like vertigo, nausea, and dizziness. Um, and the military in their studies have noted some physical performance um, some physical performance uh, detriment so so the the mental boost can come at a cost of physical performance this has been seen in uh, some studies and it also can be contraindicated with other drugs because it does inhibit some hepatic cytochrome p450 isoenzymes basically meaning that it's going to prevent these other drugs from being pro- uh, properly metabolized so some of these other drugs if you're taking blood pressure medication blood sugar medication uh, any other you know psychotropic drug um, it might not get properly metabolized because this because modafinil does inhibit those uh, metabolizing enzymes in the uh, liver and modafinil might also be capable of disrupting sleep at doses greater than 300 milligrams and that's interesting because when they've compared amphetamines against modafinil they see that modafinil or uh, amphetamines especially something like Adderall um, and Ritalin they do come with a certain cost associated with sleep so people who use Adderall do report sleep disturbances sleep problems problems uh, sleep latency deep sleep REM sleep all those sleep metrics but with modafinil um, you see that much less so it can actually uh, be taken without disrupting sleep Although, you know, if you're taking a higher dose than 300 milligrams, that's where you're going to really see it. If you're taking like a 200 milligram dose or 100 milligram dose, it might not mess with your sleep as bad, especially if you're taking it 
earlier in the day. Um, and in a, uh, uh, in when the military studied this, they found um, they found because when they study modafinil, they study it in people who are in sleep deprived states. So they'll give modafinil to people who are up forty hours, sixty hours, thirty hours. And what they find is that modafinil may lead to some overconfidence um, in military personnel. So you kind of see the two worlds colliding there where even though you are you know, sleep deprived, but you're on this drug that enhances cognition, enhances focus, um, enhances memory, enhances anti-inflammatory uh, benefits, you're still going to get that, you still have that sleep deprivation, so your brain is not working properly. So your decision making might still be off, you just might be able to make that decision much faster. Um, you might be able to focus and concentrate longer, but you're not really properly interpreting what's being told to you or what you're reading or what you're understanding because the sleep deprivation is still, you know, messing with your brain. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, dosages that are best, um, most studies are done in, uh, with 200 milligram doses. I notice, um, some studies you'll find in 400 milligram doses. That is, that is pretty high. Um, so the best results are seen between one and 400 milligrams. If you are new to modafinil, you don't really know, uh, you know what to expect. S go low and slow, start low and slow. So start with hundred milligrams, take that for a few days, see how it works. Then, you know, if you notice maybe, Hey, this isn't doing so much bump up to 200. If you need 300, 400, um, you know, what you probably need to do at that point is you probably need to take a step back and reevaluate why is it that your brain is not responding? Why are you not responding to high doses of modafinil? Because modafinil, that, this is the granddaddy. This is this is the one that's going to work. You know, these other nootropics we talk about, new, uh, you know, the natural, you know, the adaptogens or the amino acids or um, you know the mushrooms or anything like that. Yeah, there's a chance you might take that and not feel that. Um, even though it might be doing something, you might not be feeling it. Modafinil, you should feel. And if you're still feeling, you know, kind of brain foggy, a little, uh, you know, a little hazy, a little tired, and you're taking modafinil, and you're up to 200, 300, you're not feeling it, um, then you have to take a step back and say, well, wh what else am I doing in my life that is that is detrimental to my sleep? Am I not sleeping? Am I not? Did I, are you not putting a focus on how to get yourself the best quality, best duration of good sleep, of deep sleep? Because there are things you can do to hack your sleep, whether it's in the bedroom, whether it's before you go to bed, whether it's things you do earlier in the day. Are you overstimulating? Are you drinking too much coffee? Are you eating too close to the time you go to bed? Are you, uh, you know, are you sleeping in a warm room? Um, is there noise around you? Is there too much light? These things you have to really kind of keep up with your own sleep hy uh, hygiene to make sure you're doing it right so that if you do take modafinil, it works. And then if you're somebody where your sleep is locked down, you feel good throughout the day, you take 200 milligrams of modafinil, you should get that that limitless, that superhuman feeling. You should get that superhuman energy, energy that superhuman um, ability to focus. That's what this that's what this drug does. Um, so uh, so it can certainly it's it's definitely you know been studied to work right to do these things that uh, that you've seen in movies like Limitless that you hear about, you know, certain people saying when they've taken modafinil, they've experienced these cognitive enhancing effects. Again, it's the original smart drug. It works, but you also have to do the things underlying your own health and wellness, your holistic health and wellness to really make it so you can feel superhuman on a drug like modafinil. But I'd love to know what you think. Are you someone who takes modafinil? Have you tried modafinil? Have you tried an analog of modafinil like FL modafinil or R modafinil or adrafinil? Let me know down in the comments what you think. If you enjoyed the video, again, leave it five stars. Leave it a thumbs up uh, and five stars over on Apple iTunes. And until next time, everybody, I'll see you when I see you. Until next time, peace.